Shaw could tell by Crickson's heavy footsteps the man was upset. Cool and collected, Crickson rarely showed emotion on his face, but Shaw had learned to read the subtlety of his footfalls. "'We are going to war with children now,' Crickson fumed. "'Sir, we have to do something about this. "'I've read the bill three times. "'My hands are tied. "'This is a legal order,' Shaw replied. "'Sir, we can't just—' "'Crickson interrupted him, a rarity for the man. "'Don't worry, Captain,' Shaw soothed. "'I have to give Vivix what he wants, "'but I don't have to do it the way he wants. "'I have a plan.' "'I still say—' "'Crickson stopped as the turbo-lift door opened. "'Any anger that was on the man's face melted, "'and he stood up to his full height. "'The two walked onto the bridge and down the walkway. "'Shaw ahead and Crickson following a step behind to his right, "'hands clasped behind his back. "'Only when the two were standing by the massive viewports "'did Crickson again speak at barely more than a whisper. "'Sir, I still say we should disobey.' There will be violence if we try to take them, and I will not be responsible for the slaughter of children. No students are going to die on my watch, Shaw said reassuringly. First, I will speak to the students in person. When that does not work... Shaw was shoved back up the boarding ramp as a bottle smashed into one of the clone troopers next to him. The boarding ramp closed, but the clang on the hull continued. Things were worse than Shaw had expected. He had only made it a few lines into his speech before order had broken down. It looks like they would have to do things the hard way. Shaw held the comm link up to his lips. Delta Flight, this is Shaw. Start your run. Jovis continued his chant as he threw another rock at the shuttle. Around him, people were doing much the same. Some of his fellow student demonstrators were brave enough to run up and start kicking the spacecraft. Murmurs began, and Jovis followed the crowd's attention to the sky. Something was coming down at them. At first, Jovis was afraid, both of the airborne danger and the rising panic in the crowd. But someone on a loudspeaker announced, Stand your ground! They won't damage their own shuttle! Jovis held his breath. The Y-shaped starfighters approached and flew overhead so close that Jovis could make out some of the engine detail. After buzzing the university courtyard, causing some of the protesters to flee, the ships climbed and disappeared back into the sky. You see? The person on the loudspeaker yelled, They are cowards! Stand up to the oppressors! The protesters cheered in reply and continued to throw items at the shuttle. After a short time, the chant stopped and someone began playing loud music. Jovis was overjoyed. They had been right all along. What a victory! Why not celebrate? He started to dance and kiss his girl. The cheers continued as the music began to slow. Jovis did not care. They had won. In front of him, some of the crowd had started to sit or lay on the lawn. What a good idea, Jovis thought to himself. He was feeling a bit tired after all the chanting and rock throwing. Jovis joined his girlfriend Mira in the comfortable grass. At first he sat still smiling, but the ground was just so soft, so comfortable. He'd lay down with Mira and looked up at the sky. The free sky they had won. Jovis was vaguely aware of a hiss and the clamor of boots around him. It was all okay, though. He was so happy. The party was just getting started. Jovis sighed and closed his eyes. He was more tired than he had thought. All in the name of freedom. Things were just so great. Shaw stood holding his breath mask. He looked around at the small sea of unconscious students and faculty. Two clone troopers were carrying a sleeping body towards the loading ramp. Shaw recognized the old man as one of their targets, political science professor. Sir? The voice in Shaw's earpiece drew him away from his thinking. We encountered some resistance, but we have apprehended all the targets. Any casualties? Shaw asked, his voice muffled by the breathing mask. None. The voice confirmed. The target surrendered, but we had to stun two students. They tried to attack us. Should we take them into custody? Shaw thought for a moment. No. Ensure they are unharmed, but leave them. Shaw checked his chrono. They should have enough time to retrieve their objectives and lift before the gas wore off. Deploying it in the open air had lessened its potency. Either way, he did not want to be around when almost a hundred troublemakers awoke with something akin to a bad hangover. 
Shaw walked down the command aisle on the bridge. He joined Crixon at the viewports. Quietly, the man said, I still can't say I agree with using gas on students. Thanks to Vivix, we had no good options, Shaw lamented. At least the gas was gentle, more like intoxication. And if university is anything like I remember, they should be familiar with that sensation. Crixon nodded but remained distant. I just don't like the way things are changing. I keep seeing more and more people like Vivix. Sometimes... I understand how you feel, Captain, Shaw interrupted. Transitioning from the Republic to the Empire has been more difficult than I think anyone guessed. There is still corruption to be weeded out. Shaw placed a hand on the young man's shoulder. Stay the course. These kinds of jobs are just temporary. Once things have stabilized, we will have no more need for people like Vivix, and we can start returning freedom while ensuring security. Crixon nodded and returned his gaze to the stars. Shaw looked for a moment longer, then turned. I will be in my quarters. What of the prisoners? Crixon asked before Shaw could leave. I see no reason to lock old men in detention cells, Shaw said, not turning back. Find them somewhere comfortable for the return to Cordova. They are our guests until they give us reason to treat them otherwise. Shaw looked wearily at the meat on his plate. The taste was not the issue. Shaw had attended enough of Vivix's parties to know the man knew good food and drink, as evidenced by his expanding girth. No, at the moment the problem was the company. Shaw had come to the sound conclusion that Vivix was a fool. Despite the public protests, Vivix had again raised taxes. Somehow the man had been able to wring enough out of the people to meet his imperial obligations. Only so. When time had come for Vivix to keep his word and order the fleet out, he had reneged, citing the increased violence in the streets. Currently, the would-be king was throwing another one of his costume parties. Again, he was dressed in the garb of an Iron Age ruler. At least, what a bad costume designer would think one would have dressed. The gift meat was good, but it just lacked something. Shaw had tasted the best gift in the universe, and it was... He pushed the memory from his mind. Theatrics aside, this place already reminded him too much of Tarsan. Shaw watched as Vivix approached him. Maybe while the man was more than half drunk, he could convince the governor to let him do his job. Enjoying yourself, Admiral, he said, taking another big gulp of whatever was in his large stein. I am, Shaw lied. Thank you for being such a gracious host. And that's what I like about you. Vivix slurred. Always so polite. Governor, I wanted to speak with you about deploying the fleet to the outer system and setting up sector patrols. We should also start providing heavy escorts to merchant fleets until the pirate infestation has been eliminated. Shaw was hoping the drunken man would be agreeable. Shaw and his ships could be out of the system and hunting pirates before the governor sobered up. What? Vivix asked. No. We need to quell the growing unrest. Grand Moff Tarkin has increased his demands on the sector, and we need to raise the funds to meet those demands. Shaw sighed inwardly. Then may I suggest a compromise? Detach only Avenger. I will deal with the pirates personally. Polygerist is fully capable of responding to any civil unrest. Detach the most powerful ship in the system? The notion seemed to sober the governor up but only slightly. Oh, no, 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 no. We are about to implement the new space lane control. Space lane control? Shaw had a sinking feeling. All major capitals have space lanes. Not only do they organize landings, but also serve as a source of revenue from the fees and fines they generate. For far too long, ship captains have just landed their ships on Cordova as they pleased. With a wonderful spaceport, there is no reason for freighters to be landing in open fields or makeshift landing bays. Routing all traffic through the spaceport will cut down on smuggling, increase revenue, and allow Cordova to modernize. This time Shaw could not help but sigh. And you need Avenger to enforce these new lanes. Exactly, Admiral. The man's red face beamed. In addition to increased revenue, the space lanes will make ship inspections easier. Unchecked smuggling is becoming a major problem, 
and strict enforcement of the space lanes will eliminate these parasites. In one move, Cordova will not only eliminate two problems, but will also take a step to becoming a true capital world. Shaw threw down the flimsy in disgust. Nothing short of a blockade would enforce these space lanes. Crixon was also quick to notice. These landing fees are almost as much as on Coruscant. Is he mad? Shaw shook his head. No, not mad. He lives in his own fantasy. A balance of incompetence, arrogance, and thoughtlessness. But mad? No, sadly. What do we do now? Crixon asked. What little trade remains will be crushed by this. Additionally, Cordova is comparatively sparsely populated. The people here are accustomed to landing their ships where they please. I just don't see... Call a briefing of all jump-capable fighters and pilots qualified with jump booster rings, Shaw decided. Sir? Crixon seemed confused. I have decided the best way to enforce these new lanes is by informing ship captains as soon as they enter the system. That will require us to position Avenger near the outer edge. Shaw smiled inwardly. While we are there, I intend to conduct large-scale practice drills. Our fighters have not run escort duty in some time. Get me a direct line to the Merchant Guild in Cordova City. I want to speak to their maester personally. Hello, this is Adam Thomas. I hope you've enjoyed my very amateur production of Star Wars Willfully Blind, a fan fiction novel I've been working on for years. Even though I have another 200 or so pages written, they're not chaptered out and not in the order that they'll appear in the final book. I'm going to stop for here for now, but I'll post some more as I write more or as I organize it better. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me. This has been a learning experience so that one day maybe I can post videos or a podcast or something. Obviously, I don't own Star Wars, so all copyrights remain with Disney or their copyright holders. May the Force be with you. Thank you for listening.